I have absolutely loved the all of the work that you've done, but you've really become over the course of your career. If you were to look from um, the stuff that you did at the at the very very beginning with some of the web comics you've done to now Brave Volley Possum, you've become a, a really phenomenal storyteller. And one of the things Thanks. that I that I often see online is people try to critique some of your early work, especially the Axe Cop stuff, because it was stuff that you did with your your little brother. And that he was kind of in, I say kind of, he was in some ways, he was the chief storyteller because if I, if I remember the story, so cool. Yeah. If I remember the story correctly, this started when you were, you had pitched them, um, some shows, you've had some things optioned by cartoon network. You're going home for Christmas and you want to find a way to connect with your little brother. And he starts telling you about this toy he's got, which is, or this game he plays, which is Axe Cop. Um, which makes absolutely no sense, and yet has turned into um, this this I mean, huge I mean, Nick comic Offerman franchise. Doing, yeah. doing the voice yeah, Nick of Nick Offerman, X-Cop. Patton Oswalt was mm-hmm. was Sakurang. Um What was what was the genesis of Axe Cop? If you can just tell our our listeners that don't know, and then talk to us about how that that blossomed and and what you thought of of that journey. Well, I was visiting for Christmas, and I had always made it a point to visit my younger siblings. Ever since on the day that I graduated high school, my dad showed up with my new baby sister, who I'd never met yet. And that was a meaningful moment for me. And uh, so I would try to visit them every two or three times a year, go up to Washington and see them. And uh, and Malachi was kind of a surprise because they had two girls back to back. And then about six years later, my dad's like in his 60s. They suddenly have a baby. <laughs> and, uh, or no, was he in his, he's closer to 70, I think. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Or that, 65. That's what's going to happen with Lucas. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. So, so I'm 24 or so, and that's when they have Malachi. So I'm hitting my, I'm like 29 when Axe Cop gets created. And I was like kind of burnt out on, I had moved to Hollywood. I had been there for a year. Um, I had had two shows optioned and nothing happened with them. I had found two well enough paying full-time jobs. One was at Disney, but it was just drawing these like English as a second language storybooks, just copying Disney characters and drawing them and then animating math problems for this educational company. So miserable, but well-paying jobs like in my field, but like the worst version of jobs in my field. So, and then those both laid me off in the same week. So I was actually like jobless. Um, I had hit a dead end with my comics and then I, I had just started working on this other comic called Bearmageddon, but I was even burnt out on like trying with that. I was just like, so I went to, uh, home on Christmas and I was like, I'm not going to draw. I'm not going to work on these comics. I need to take a break, be with my family. And when Malachi started saying, will you play Axe Cop with me? I immediately got the visual of Axe Cop in my head. Uh, just the whole character design was there. Um, he just meant when you play cops, but he didn't have a toy gun. He had a toy axe from some <laughs> firefighter day that he went on. <laughs> give you a kit of fireman toys, you know? So uh, finally I go, all right, sure, yeah, what's, uh, what do I be? And then he just pulls out another toy. It's a flute. It's, a, it's actually a recorder. But I go, what is this? A f- what am I, flute cop? And he's like, yeah. And then we start playing. <laughs> and the whole f- playtime is literally the first comic. If you look up Axe Cop, I just had to draw it. It was a th- moment where, like, I go, you know what? I'm going to draw this. It's so funny, and I want to remember it, and it's so stupid. I'm going to draw it really sloppy. So I, I really cranked it out sloppy. I didn't do any reference work on the dinosaurs or Axe Cop's outfit. His hat looks like this weird nurse hat. I just, like, threw it down. But I was loving it so much. Over that stay, I did, like, four of them with him. I just kept turning our play times. Uh, we'd play, and then I would quiz him. I'd ask him all these questions as if I was a documentarian uh, filling in the gaps of the story. And just questioning, and then I'd ma- I'd hold him accountable to his logic. If he said, if blood gets on this ca- on a character that changes them, so anytime blood got somewhere, we had to, you know, I'd hold him to his rules, and uh, it started creating a universe very rapidly. And I was up at night drawing these, just pure the pure joy of it, no Hollywood in mind, just like loving it, and my whole family loved them. In my mind, Axe Cop was for me and my family. I didn't think that other people would think it was as funny because it's my little brother, not theirs, you know. Mm-hmm. So I just thought it, I thought it was like, look, you know, showing people your baby pictures out of your wallet, you know, like, you know, it's cute for me. You, know? you don't care. Um, so we created the Axe Cop website with a friend of mine who loved him. Um, and we did it as a test run because we were going to launch the Bear Mageddon webcomic. And I wanted a, like a rough draft of just like, how do I present a webcomic 
you know, what, you know, so we just kind of threw Axe Cop together as a test and I was going to share it with friends and family and maybe update it whenever I made a new Axe Cop comic with Malachi. And then that was like it basically like two days later, it was kind of quietly online for like two days and then something happened and it went viral. Uh, and it was just insane. Like it was the web website of the day, uh, Entertainment Weekly, the next morning. And I was getting tweets from like crazy people. I mean, like Simon Pegg and everybody at Rift Tracks and Mystery of Science Theater. Wow. Uh, I mean, who's that singer? Rob, uh, is anyone here? Zombie. <laughs> Rob, uh, yeah, anyway. Rob Thomas. Matchbox 20, Matchbox yeah, 20. Yeah, yeah, Rob that Thomas. Guy men people are mentioning it like in pop culture, like, it was just crazy. Like, it was like uh, as if you're watching TV and then all of a sudden the characters acknowledge you that you're watching them. That's how it felt like on Twitter. All these big accounts I'd been following, suddenly they were talking to me. So it was a crazy experience. It ended up being, uh, we ended up doing a six book uh, deal with Dark Horse. It was like we did two book, three two book deals basically with Dark Horse Comics and I started going out to Washington at, when I'd spent a month at a time and we'd write these epics together and um, then we ended up doing that TV show with Fox uh, that was on late night. Yeah, so we've got all six volumes of it are, are right here just above our sacred mm -hmm. text of the Babylon Bee. We've got nice. all six of those. Flute Cop <sighs> is a really bizarre character because yes. Flute Cop... And it Cop, makes more sense now. <laughs> well, but Flute Cop also has like six iterations. Uh -huh. He's Flute mm -hmm. Cop, he becomes Avocado Cop... <laughs> Um, so with, with the rules that you're, you're holding Malachi to, how difficult was that to keep him following the rules with these characters? And then, you know, you said you went away and then you would come back, you know, how do you jump back into the story where, where you left off in order to try to create continuity? Because the books flow really well from one to the other. And that seems like it'd be a difficult task with a, with a young brother trying to rein him back in and be like, no, remember he's an avocado now. And he's like, yeah, we're not playing I'm, Ninja Turtles right now. We're yeah. playing Axe Cop. I'm, I'm tired of him being an <laughs> avocado. I want him to be a bird. Yeah. Well, that was the thing when we play, he would let me be Axe Cop. And so I would basically stay Axe Cop most of the time, unless he suggested a way, like sometimes for a finishing move, Axe Cop will pour blood on him and turn into something to, to kill the bad guy. Right. Like he would turn into like a lava bowl at some point, I think. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, so he usually would be flute cop, and that's why he changes so often because his short attention span, you know. But my basic writing process with Malachi was like we would play, go crazy. I'd just note anything funny, anything that was working, and whatever the basic conflict was. And then we started doing, when I really needed a complex story, we would take, we would do good guy days and bad guy days. So we'd do days where after we'd establish some of the storyline, I'd go, okay, now today we're going to pretend to be the bad guys. And that make the bad guys way more scary because suddenly he's taking their role and he's talking about how he's going to kill Axe Cop. And, uh, and then be, they become way harder to defeat. And uh, so I'm trying to do this push and pull between those. And it's a lot of role playing. And then after I do all the role playing, I piece out what we have on a plot and I find all the gaps. And I just start asking them questions to fill in those gaps until I get something that works. Or I've taken so many notes from so many questions. We've done all these Ask Axe Cop questions. We have notebooks full of answers to those that haven't been used in comics. And sometimes I'll go back through those and go, you know, this might fit in this gap. And I'll just basically this patchwork of his brain into a story. So it's kind of this weird ransom note story, uh, you know, sort of way of piecing together his brain into different storylines. <laughs> well, I, I, I can think of no better way uh, or, or no, nothing I've seen of relating to, you know, as an adult with a much younger brother, of relating by storytelling. And you, you, I've heard you mention, um, tell, you were telling, you were talking to Doug Tenapel on one of the Audio Mullet podcasts of, you know, the story with your dad, how he, he left and he felt like he was a failure, but that one of your favorite memories w with him was his stories, you know, how, how he mm -hmm. would make up stories on the spot. So uh, I am curious with you crafting this story with his son, how did that go with with your dad at the time? You know, did, what what kind of growth did you see with your relationship? My dad was getting pretty old by the time Axe Cop hit. Uh, he was slowing down, so he didn't get involved much. He just didn't have the. the I mean, Malachi was just a, you know, just a. His, wild kid you know just running around bouncing off i mean he when, when we do these stories he would be running around the room as he talked um so 
My dad just loved it, though. He ate it. And it had to be, like, amazing for him to be yeah. watching his offspring of so far apart, you know, 24 years apart, <laughs> uh, creating this thing together. And then suddenly we are you know, being all being flown out to Comic-Con as special guests. There's, like, a giant balloon of Axe Cop over one of the parking lots. We're, special, oh, wow. we're doing a giant panel. Uh, just wild, you know, to see the two of us up there together and... I mean, he he loved it. He always wore an Axe Cop shirt all the time. He would tell everybody about it. Yeah, that was one of the funniest things, you know, Axe Cop. He's on the plane to San Diego Comic-Con. Everybody on the plane's going there. Yeah. And he's, you know, most of the people on the plane are like, that's the Axe Cop kid. But like, because this is like at the height, you know. But he's turning around and going around to everybody. Hey, have you heard of Axe Cop? This is my, <laughs> <laughs> my son's made it. <laughs> I, I can only imagine how proud, you know, it, putting myself in, in his shoes of seeing, like you said, his his two offspring uh, mm-hmm. taking up the mantle of storytelling in a way to relate to each other because that's it's it's really cool. 